visit majestic homes, charity houses, archaeological sites of all civilizations here and there. Tunisia, the smallest North African country. Situated near the Mediterranean Sea, Tunisia achieved independence in 1956, after 70 years of French rule. Yet, more than 1,300 years ago, this country was part of the strong Islamic empire of North Africa. Despite today's rapid development, the vestiges of colonization still remain. Its surroundings filled with continental buildings and even cars can easily be mistaken for Europe. Tunisia is located at the edge of the Mediterranean Sea. In the year 50, Hijra brought Islam to this country. The Berber people here are said to be the result of intermarriages between the inhabitants of the Mediterranean shores, such as the Libyans, Egyptians, and the Italians. With a population of about 10 million people, almost all the inhabitants of Tunisia are the followers of the Sunni sect. French and Italian are widely spoken, while Arabic has been granted as the country's national language. In these alleys, myriads of souvenirs representing Tunisian art history can be seen. The Pulse of the Medina. The Zaytuna Mosque stands grand, defying time in order for today's generation to witness its quest that knows no boundaries. It was here also that all matters concerning administration, defense, and the spiritual were carried out during the times when the Muslim troops first arrived. It was later transformed into a place of worship and a center of knowledge. The attention of the rulers that have come and gone enabled this Islamic center to prosper until today. This center has given birth to many Muslim scholars and many have migrated to other Muslim countries to spread the faith. ذهب الله بنورهم وتركهم في ظلمات لا يبصرون صمب بكم عمي this atmosphere has been a part of the Zaytuna Mosque never since it was first erected. Efforts to live in the mosque for 24 hours are still being practiced by the older generation till this very day. This group was originally comprised of 50 people and they will read the holy verses of the Quran. This small African country encompasses a large landscape of hilly terrains and stretches of beaches. The Republic of Djibouti, situated close to the Straits of Mandeb, where the Red Sea meets the Indian Ocean. In the early days, Djibouti was a birthing and trading site for the merchants of Africa and Arabia. Today, the country's economy depends mostly on its neighbors, Ethiopia. The searing climate experienced throughout the year causes Djibouti to be dry and renders the land unsuitable for agriculture. Djibouti produces only 3% of its own food needs and the rest comes from its neighboring countries. Located at the mouth of the Red Sea, this country is also well known for its salt lakes. The Salt Lake, known as the Asa Lake, 
is located 150 meters below sea level. The high salt content of its water makes it unbearable for any life forms. However, the villagers depend on the salt for their livelihood. Musa Hassan is the driver of this tractor and he is adept with the task of collecting salt. Tractors working in this scorching temperature usually have very short lifespan, about five years. The tractor must be cleaned whenever a work is completed, in order to facilitate the subsequent tasks. The majority of the people of Djibouti originated from Ethiopia. They emigrated here to seek a life. They speak four languages, French and Arabic are the official languages. There are six ethnic groups in Djibouti, and the largest group is the Somalian followed by the Afar. Despite their ethnic diversity, they live in harmony, fostering mutual respect and cooperation. Packed salt is exported to the neighboring countries. Djibouti is the biggest salt exporter to Ethiopia, Somalia and Eritrea. The population of Djibouti is about half a million. Two-thirds of them live in the capital, Djibouti city. Almost all are Muslim. Islam was introduced to Djibouti early in the 9th century by several groups of people, including the Afars from Eastern Ethiopia and the Isas from Somalia. Djibouti had also came under the rule of Arab merchants who arrived to trade in the 16th century and then it fell to the French in 1862. Djibouti was granted independence by France on the 27th of June 1977. Today development is sweeping all across the city of Djibouti. There is a train system that links Djibouti with Ethiopia. The railway is 100 kilometers in length. This railway line, which has only one track, transports commodities such as cement, textile and staple food. Tucked in the city of Djibouti, Avenue du Brazzaville is a place known for its craft and clothing. Here we can see a myriad of souvenirs from the handicraft of the local people. There are also goods imported from nearby countries. Among the handicraft that are sold includes Jambia. Jambia is made from the horn of the rhinoceros. In days gone by, it is used as a weapon for self-defense. Jambia is also used in Yemen as an ornament for the manfold. In Djibouti, it is used as an ornament and a souvenir for both locals and foreign visitors.
This shows that the people of Djibouti are not only united behind one religion, Islam, but they also share one culture. The ancient traveller Marco Polo preferred the islands of Maldives as the flower of the Indies. And Ibn Battuta called her in his chronicles, one of the wonders of the world. Mali is the biggest city and the capital of Maldives. This small has population of about 300,000 people. The country is composed of various ethnic origins, South Indians, Sinhalese and Arabs. Despite their diverse ethnic origins, they all share the same religion, Islam. Divei, a dialect of Sinhala in the mother tongue of the people of Maldives. And this language is also widely used in their neighboring country of Sri Lanka. Surrounded by sea, Maldives is unique. Apart from tourism that has been given increasing attention, Fishing is also the main source of livelihood for many of the people here. Fish does not only provide the main source of protein for the people in this country, the fact is that the fishing business has been the pulse of the Maldivian since the ancient times. The product of Maldive fish is well known for its high quality and its natural goodness. It is free from chemicals and synthetic flavoring. And this is vouched for by countries which derive their supply of fish from Maldives, such as Taiwan, Japan and Thailand. Forty percent of the annual incomes for this country depends on sea produce such as processed tuna. Sultan Muhammad the Kurufaunu al Adam was the founder of this Maldives' biggest mosque in Mali. This mosque built in 11th of November 1982 and can accommodate a mass of 5,000 worshippers at one time. The verses etched on this wall serves not only as decoration but are actually holy verses to be used as guidance for the Muslim people. According to history, Muhammad Dhakuru Fahunu al Adam was a venerated warrior who had fought for the cause of Islam. He fought hand and line for 12 years to drive out the Portuguese from the islands of Maldives. The mosque was named after the Sultan as an appreciation for his righteous efforts. The children are taught since young to be knowledgeable of the Quran. As the saying goes, to bend the bamboo best start from its shoot. The Muslims on this island do not neglect their duty to fulfill their duties to Allah. The Iroquois scheme mosque founded by Sultan Ibrahim Iskander was completed in 1658 and provides an area for the Muslims to perform Masa prayers. The people of Maldives embraced Islam since about 500 years ago. Islam was brought by the Arabs who had stopped by the island on their journey to China. Islam says all that lives shall return to Allah. The gravestone reveals that the symmetry here is one of its kind. Beneath the rounded gravestone lies the men, while beneath the oblong lies the women. 
Historical records depict that King Divemi Kila Maja of the Timurj dynasty embraced Islam and subsequently changed his name to Sultan Muhammad bin Abdullah. The spread of Islam since then is attributed to the Sultan's efforts. The mosque is well preserved by the locals. The palm fringed beaches, which is swaying coconut leaves, have been epitomized as the main draw of Maldives. Every year, tourists mounting to over 300,000, more than its own population, flood Maldives from all corners of the world. It is believed that the Aryans were the first people to inhabit the Maldives Islands. The island has only about 1,700 people, and each leads their unique own lifestyle. In Maldives, young children are exposed to Quran from their tender age and are sent to the Madarasa to learn to read the Quran and to develop deep knowledge of the holy religion of Islam. The chorus of voices is soothing as verses of the recited Quran brings them closer to Allah. Today, the people of Maldives, who are a potpourri of races, live in harmony. Herald Islam as their official religion. We shall visit majestic homes. Charity houses, archaeological sites of all civilizations here and Egypt, it holds a thousand mysteries in the falls of its history. It's synonymous with the pharaohs and the pyramids. Pharaoh is the title bestowed upon the kings of ancient Egypt, who had ruled for approximately 3,000 years. The pharaoh dynasty dates back to 27 centuries ago. And throughout that period, Egypt was ruled by about 175 pharaohs, each possessing a myriad of characteristics. The pharaoh Ramses was among the pharaohs who reigned in cruelty and ruthlessness and was defiant towards the one true God. The pharaoh Akhenaten conversely was a believer of God and was faithful towards Allah. The pyramids are unique tombs of the pharaohs, and they are well known throughout the world. The pyramids have become the epitome of ingenuity and perseverance of the ancient Egyptians in building its early civilization. The Great Pyramid of the Pharaoh Khufu in Giza Valley erected as early 2560 BC is today one of the seven wonders of the world. The modernization of Egypt through impressive is not entirely the factor that entices tourists over, but instead it is the unique historical monuments recognized by the UNESCO that has spread Egypt's name the world over.
Egypt has also garnered the attention of archaeologists, who are keen on unraveling the secrets of this ancient treasure. This country is situated at the northeast of the African continent. Egypt, which achieved independence in 1952, has a land area of approximately 1 million square kilometers. Its people comprise a portfolio of races and ethnic groups, where the majority consists of the Egyptians followed by the Badawis and the Nubias. The total population is approximately 70 million, and 94% of Egyptians follow the religion of Islam. The people of Egypt use Arabic as their daily medium of communication, and this has made it the official language of the country. Those who have higher education have the advantage of understanding English and French. Cairo, the capital of Egypt since the 10th century, is undergoing rapid development and is today the biggest city in the Middle East and Africa. The tales of a thousand and one nights had told the story of a town that had 20 million citizens. The Islamic Ummah here are very fortunate because this is the birthplace of many scholars, like Ibn Yunus who was a revered astronomer in his time. It is here too that one can find the Al-Azhar University, which originally served as a mosque. According to the historical records, Al-Azhar Mosque was founded by Commander Jawahar al sakili from the islands of Sicily. He was sent by the Caliph al muaydh Fatimiyah to conquer Egypt and subsequently discovered Cairo. In the beginning, the mosque was used to deliver various seminars at no cost. Until today, Al-Azhar University offers various courses to qualified Muslims from around the world. Among the courses offered are law, Arabic, usul deen and hadith, as well as those relate to Islam. Living up to its name, Al-Azhar, which carries the meaning the glorious. The university has continued to grow in all glory as Islam's intellectual center. The mere mention of the name Egypt conjures up images of the Nile River. 99% of the 70 million population of Egypt is concentrated in the urban areas and the Nile Valley. Without the Nile River, Egypt may not have existed. As the famous Greek historian Herodotus once declared, Egypt is the gift of the Nile. The world's longest river begins from the Tamanika Lake and flows into the Mediterranean Sea. In Egypt alone, the Nile stretches over 1,200 kilometers. The Azor waters of the Nile are home to a multitude of aquatic life, such as 47 different species of fishes. Formerly, Aswan was a prosperous trade center and a fort to defend and ward off enemy attacks from the inlands of Africa. 
in recent times Aswan is famous of its dam that has served the people of Egypt well. The Aswan Dam has also birthed the biggest lake in the world, the Nasser Lake. The dam was completed in 1970 and is capable of producing 5,600 million kilowatt of hydroelectric energy. This 4,132 miles long river also supplies 84 billion cubic meters of water annually. It provides great contributions to Egyptians in the fields of agriculture, transportation, tourism, and hydroelectric energy. The Aswan Dam produces ample water supply to the agriculture lands when the water level in the Nile River falls. The Suhail Island is well known for its beauty. It is situated in Aswan, 950 kilometers from Cairo. At the pinnacle of this stone hill, there lies the littered stone still of famine. According to archaeologists, the etchings of the stone tell of the wisdom of Prophet Joseph. The Prophet planned the economy of Egypt, and as a result, the people lived in comfort. It tells the story of how the Prophet freed Egypt from the torturous ordeal, brought about by a long drought lasting seven years. The ancient Egyptian writings of hieroglyphics were carved onto the stone. These stones still stand firm despite being worn by the time and age. The breathtaking panorama provides the attraction that captures the interest of tourists who are seeking peace and tranquility. Tourists scarcely leave out the opportunity to cruise along the River Nile on the traditional Egyptian barge known as the Thaluka. This is the city of Al Fayyum, the center of administrative and economic activities of Wadi Al Fayyum. Al Fayyum is derived from the Arabic word Al Fuyaman that means a thousand days, which represents the period of time taken by the Prophet Joseph to build this city. Al Fayyum receives its water supply from the Bahar Yusuf, or the Sea of Joseph, which is a river that has taken the name of its founder, Prophet Joseph. Water is channeled into the city through hundreds of canals along the Bahar Yusuf using water mills. To this day, there are 200 water mills that function to channel water to the whole of Al Fayyum, which has an area of 12,000 square kilometers. The water mills are representative symbols of Al Fayyum which is considered the very first agricultural district in the world. This complex drainage system results fertile soil in the land. 
The area of the Nile Valley and Delta that comprise an area as wide as 30,000 square kilometers requires the service of the river to fertilize the land and to provide livelihood to the people of Egypt. The agriculture sector of the country contributes to 17% of its gross national products. Wheat is the prime agriculture produce in Egypt. Some villages in Al Fayyum produce wheat flour by traditional means. However, this practice is decreasing as the waves of modernization sweep in. The agriculture bazaar in Al Fayyum is always crowded with people. Here, all fresh agricultural produces are sold at reasonable prices. The Egyptian pound is used as the currency for buying and selling. The Karun Lake also holds its own tail. It is situated approximately 30 kilometers from Cairo. This lake is a testimony of God's powers against the arrogant, wealthy Karu. It was in accordance with God's will that all his possessions are to be submerged to the ends of the earth and later formed into a lake. Children love to catch shrimps that float at the edge of the lake. The hefty catch helps increase the income of the families. Luxor had once been a part of the Thebes fort, a famous center of administration and religion of the pharaoh. Today, the tourism sector of Luxor is gaining popularity. And in line with that, many youths are getting involved in this sector. The bazaar in Luxor attracts tourists from all corners of the world. There are many exquisite souvenirs here made by the locals. Luxor is well known for its precious stones and provides the locals with a source of livelihood. The proprietor of this souvenir shop sells paintings that have been intricately painted on papyrus paper. This painting has the theme of the ancient Egyptian civilization, which feature the hieroglyphic writing, the historical monuments and the face of the pharaoh to entice the buyer. The kebab is among the more popular food for the Egyptian society. The kebab is made of bread, meat and salad, and it is commonly eaten in a tray en masse. Today is a public holiday for the people of Egypt. They are here to celebrate the Shamun Nassim festival. The Shamun Nasim is the festival of pickled fish. While having a time for recreation, the younger generations of Egypt are taught to reminisce on its ancient history, which is considered the mother of the world's civilizations. All stories, good or bad, are referred to as a guide, particularly in the life of an Islamic society. As the saying goes, the good is used for reference, the bad is considered a boundary. Oh.
Na 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 na